Hey Sibs and welcome back to my channel. This week's topic is going to be about food and weight during puberty. What's normal and what to expect. So let's talk about puberty first. Most of you have heard about puberty. Um, you've had people talk to you about it in some way or another. Hopefully it wasn't too weird. Um, but basically what puberty boils down to is your child body growing, developing and becoming the adult body that you will have for the rest of your life. Now this doesn't happen overnight, um, some things will happen overnight and very quickly, but the process of becoming an adult takes a couple of years and puberty plays a big role in that. So it's basically a time when your body is kind of building itself um, and in order to build itself it needs fuel and that fuel comes from food mainly, but also things like sleep and exercise which I will touch upon in this video. So one of the main things that people talk about when they talk about puberty is the growth spurt. People will tell you, oh my gosh, you've grown so much, or look at you, you're so tall. Growth spurt, growth spurt, growth spurt. What is this? It's basically a drastic increase in height, and when I say drastic, I mean really drastic. You can grow up to three and a half inches in one year. That's kind of a lot. And so when you're going through this growth spurt, what happens is your extremities, which is your hands, your feet, your limbs in general, and your head grow first, and then the rest of your body grows. So this can result in kind of an awkward phase where you feel like you're really lanky and really weird and like your body's just proportional. And people get really self-conscious and kind of like don't really want anybody talking about their body or whatever. But you shouldn't be so self-conscious. I mean, when you think about it, you've gone through this awkward phase before. When, you might be asking? Well, when you were born. You were born with a giant head. Babies have huge heads. It's because we have to have our big brains contained in something. So babies are born with this giant head, little body, and they kind of stay that way, you know, up until, I don't know, around like the age of like seven, eight, when your body starts fixing itself again. So you'll see toddlers, they have huge heads, they kind of topple over sometimes. They can't reach over their heads because their little arms are so short compared to how big their head is and how small their body is. And everybody thought you were adorable and cute, so who cares that your arms are a little bit longer now and your head's a little bit bigger and your body's a little bit shorter? You're adorable, you're growing into your body, this is an awesome time. So because you've already gone through this awkward phase, just think of it as you're a pro. Don't stress about it. But now here's the weird thing. How many of you have heard about the weight spurt? Not very many of you. And you know why? Because it's not really a thing. I made it up. <laughs> but weight increase is something that happens during puberty too, except people don't really talk about it as much as they talk about the height thing. So while everybody's telling you, oh my gosh, you're so tall and whatever, you kind of see it as a compliment. You don't think of it as, oh my god, I'm so self-conscious that I'm tall. Too much, especially if your friends are also tall, who cares? But when you see that you're gaining weight because you're weighing yourself, you start worrying, oh my gosh, I'm gaining so much weight. If you think about the fact that a typical guy can gain up to 30 pounds or even more during puberty, 30 pounds is a lot. And that can cause anxiety and stress for a lot of kids for no reason. And I'll tell you why. The main thing is that weight and height go together. If height increases, weight has to increase. And I'll explain this to you. So don't worry. When I say weight increase, or just weight in general, most people think about fat. Increase in weight equals increase in fat, right? Well, actually, no. And if you thought that way, I don't blame you, because that's the way our society kind of talks about weight in general. When people say, I've lost weight, or I've gained weight, or I'm trying to lose weight, they're usually talking about, I'm trying to lose fat. But weight and fat are not equivalent. What is weight? Weight is all of you. When you weigh yourself on a scale, you're weighing your whole body. You're not just taking out the fat parts and weighing them. You're weighing out your whole body. And what does your body consist of? Well, the majority of your, uh, of your body is actually water. The two-thirds of your body is actually water. And it's mainly contained in your blood. So what else makes up your weight? Well, your muscles, your bones, your organs. Think about it this way. Your skin is the biggest organ that you own. And it accounts for about 16% of your total body weight. That's a lot. That's about one-fifth, almost. Or, for example, the human lungs. Adult lungs are about 1.18 kilograms, or, maybe, or you can say 2.6 pounds. So if you think about how many organs you have, you know, and how big they are, your brain, your heart, your liver, your all that stuff inside you, 
you know, and how much they can weigh, it kind of adds up. So fat actually plays a really small role in your total body weight. So when you're weighing yourself, remember, you're weighing all of you. And one more way to think about it is we all weigh more than kids, right? I mean, why? We are bigger than them. We are taller than them. We are stronger than them. We're just basically bigger. And so if we weigh more than kids and we're teens and adults, wouldn't it make sense that as your body's changing from a child into an adult that you would weigh more than you did as a child? Okay, so now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, let's go back to our analogy of thinking our, of our body. Wait, I have a hair on me. Ugh. <laughs> of thinking our, about our body as a project. Think of any school project you've ever done or that you have to do. What do you need? Well, you need materials. You need things like glue and scissors and paper and markers and crayons and cutouts and poster board and all kinds of things, right? So, just like scissors are different from glue and they play a different role in the making of your project, so are the different food groups and the different food within those food groups. And your body needs all of the different types of materials to work on this project, which is your body. And in order to build the best possible version of you, your body needs the best possible materials. And when you think about puberty and how fast everything is happening, it's kind of like a cramming session. Like the day before the exam or the day before your project is due and you're just rushing and you're just getting a bunch of things and your body constantly needs stuff. And this is why it may feel like you're constantly eating and you're constantly exhausted. And you're constantly sleeping as a result. This makes sense. Your body is building itself and it's a lot of work and it's a big project. So yeah, so if you're eating a lot and you're sleeping a lot, don't worry, this is good. What's not good though, is when you're giving your body too much, especially too much of what it doesn't need, and of the wrong thing. And when I'm talking about that stuff, I'm mainly talking about junk food. So junk food, you can think about it. So first of all, junk food is things like chips, you know, pop, candy, chocolates, all that kind of stuff. So think about junk food um, in terms of our analogy as lamps. You're working on your project and you're like, okay, I'm getting stuff done and someone brings you a lamp and you're like, okay, cool, I can work with that. Um, lamps give me light. I guess I can work through the night. It'll be great. It's fine. And so you're working and you're like, oh, I'm running out of glue. You know what? I need glue. Can someone please get me glue? And that person brings you another lamp and you're like, okay, great, we have a lamp, I need glue. And they're like, okay, and they bring you another lamp. And you're like, I need glue, I can't work without glue. And they keep bringing you lamps. And you're like, okay, you're putting these lamps off to the side. I need glue, I have everything cut out. I need glue, I can't move on unless I have glue. Or tape, something, give me something to adhere this to. This is exactly what your body is doing when you're giving it junk food. You're constantly giving it stuff but it's not the stuff it needs. And your body's like, great, let's just store that as fat. I still need fruits. I still need vegetables. Starburst is not strawberries. <laughs> it's not the same thing. I still need the materials that I need to build this thing for you. Can you please get me nutritious, healthy food? So you're constantly eating junk food, but you're not actually satisfied. You're not actually getting rid of your hunger. And that's because hunger is a way of your body telling you what it needs. So think about that next time when you're gonna grab, you know, a quick snack or something because you're hungry and you're like, oh, I'm too lazy to make something. Are you really helping your body? Okay. So if your body doesn't get what it's, what it needs, just like if you were working on a project and you didn't have glue, you can't continue. You can't keep working. It stalls the project and it can actually stall the whole process, which can lead to a lot of problems later on in life. It can develop chronic conditions. It can develop diseases, eating disorders, all kinds of things. And it's just not a good idea. If you're trying to build the best you you can possibly build, you need to give it the best materials. And those don't come in the form of junk food. So just remember to think about that. Um, eating healthy is very important, but because I'm not really a nutritionist and I'm not really qualified to be giving you advice on that kind of stuff, what you should be eating and things like that, I'm actually going to link you um, some sites on, uh, in the description box. So you can go and um, look at them yourself and of course talk to your doctor if you're worried about your um, diet and what you're eating, what you should be eating and you're not sure. Talk to your parents, talk to your doctor um, and get yourself the best possible materials that your body needs. Okay, so we've covered food. Sleep is the other one. Sleep is very, very important but I'm not going to cover it too much in this video because I think that it could take up a whole video itself and I will be addressing sleep in another time. 
All I do want to say is that sleep is very important because it's the one time in the day when your body doesn't have to worry about did you do your homework, what's the drama that's going on right now, are people talking about me behind my back, am I going hit, to get hit by a car, all that kind of stuff. Your body isn't worried about that stuff. It can just focus on building you. And some of the biggest growth spurts actually happen while you're sleeping. So sleep is very important and make sure you're getting the amount of sleep that you need. Okay, and now exercise is the last one. And I'm gonna use another analogy because I love analogies because it just makes so much more sense. Look at this hair, it's just always in my face. Like, what the heck? Anyway, exercise for your body in puberty is like, hmm, think about it. If you're a girl and you're putting on makeup and you do that thing where you're like, eh, uh, and then you kind of step back to see what you're doing and you keep doing it or you're doing your hair and you step back to see what it looks like guys you do the same thing you know you might be building something working on a car or you know even with your own hair you're fixing it and then you kind of step back to see what it looks like this is exactly what exercise is for your body as your body is building itself it's growing these crazy long limbs it's developing these muscles and stuff your body needs to go for a test drive and see if this is the stuff that it's building is actually working and if, how it's all going to fit together so remember, because your body, you know, one side might grow more than the other side before that side catches up and things like that, your body needs to adjust itself. And as it's doing this growing, it needs to constantly go and test itself out. And that's what exercise does. Any form of exercise, it could just be running or it could be a sport. It could be dance. It could be, I don't know, yoga. Whatever you like, just keep active. It's very important. Um... Because it honestly, it ensures proper muscle development and joint development. It um, promotes flexibility and strength. It means that as your muscles are growing, they're also getting bigger, they're getting stronger. You're able to do more, which is the exciting thing. I remember, I'm a ballerina. I danced my whole life. And I remember one time I came to dance class and everything just felt so odd. And I, it was just frustrating because I couldn't get anything. But then the next week, I realized that I could hold my leg up for longer. And, for, and, and higher. And that's something that I wasn't able to do before because my muscles were weaker. I had a child's body and now I was developing this adult body that could do more and was capable of all these cool, amazing, crazy things. And it made me want to practice my um, sport, because I call dance sport, um, even more. And you know, it, can, it applies to any sport. I used to play basketball too. Suddenly I could do a layup from farther down the court. I didn't have to be right next to the net. I could start farther back because my legs were longer. I could travel farther distance in a shorter amount of time. It was amazing. And you know what? People that don't continue to stay active during their teens um, have a lot of problems later on in adult life. Not only with diet and, you know, gaining weight and things like that, but also with the way their body functions. You get a lot of chronic illnesses. You get back pain. You get, you know, knee and joint problems. Some people have really bad posture because they never worked those back muscles and did anything to ensure that the muscles that are forming and the, and the way the joints are being held is done properly. It's just... It's indispensable to your proper development and growth that you keep exercising as you're growing and that you do not stop. This is especially important for girls. A lot of girls stop doing whatever they started when they were kids because they get self-conscious. They don't want to get sweaty. They don't want they want to look good and whatever. But really when you think about it, it isn't isn't what's good for you more important than how you look? And I mean we all sweat. And it's great to have a sport or something that you're passionate about because that makes you more attractive. Because you have a talent, because you have a passion, because you might actually have something in common with your future crush. You know, if you both play the same sport, hey, you've got something to talk about. You can find an excuse to see each other on the court or on the um you know, on the field, or maybe go to each other's games, you know? It's good to stay active, and it's not just good, it's important. So please make sure that you exercise. The other thing that exercise does is it regulates sleep, and it regulates your food intake. So if you feel like you're having weird cravings, or you just don't know what's going on, or you have insomnia, you can't sleep, you're sleeping too much, whatever, exercise is a great way to actually get that back on track. So before you go and you're like, oh my god, what's wrong with me, freak out, you know, try maybe going for a run. Do a couple sit-ups. Do a couple push-ups. See if you can do more than you were able to before because your body has changed. It has acquired new features, new skills, just like an upgrade on an iPhone or a new version of a car. It's got more stuff now, and it's a cool thing to test out and see what it can do. So, yeah, make sure you exercise, make sure you sleep, and make sure you're feeding your body the proper food that it needs. And the last thing I'm going to leave you with is a story. I love stories and I especially love children's stories because I feel like you read them once as a kid and then you grow up and you realize there was a deeper meaning to that story. And that's the case with the story I'm going to read to you today. This story was read to 
basically anybody in North America, I'm assuming. If you were um, went to a Canadian or American school, you were probably exposed to this story as a child. If you're not from um, North America, you might have still been exposed to the story, and if you haven't, you will now. And I think it's a great story with a great message that's very applicable to my topic today, to our topic. So, before I get on with the story, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. Please make sure you check out the links below and um, to get more information. And if you have any questions, make sure you ask. Um, the one thing I do want to leave you with is always, always, always check in with your parents and with your doctor before you do anything. Your doctors are amazing. They're there to help you and they know what they're doing. So if you have any questions, if you're not sure about something, always make sure you're checking in with your healthcare provider. It could be a nurse, um, doesn't matter, but make sure you're getting the information you need. Make sure you go in for checkups and you take care of yourself. And yeah, love your body because it's the only one you have and it's the one you're going to have for the rest of your life. So it's good to be good friends with yourself first. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you didn't like it, don't touch anything. <laughs> Subscribe to my channel. Make sure you share this video and my intro videos from last week so that more people can be exposed to Big Sis. And yeah, make sure you ask me questions. Send in your emails to askbigsisnow at gmail.com so that I can make a new video for next week and uh, help you out. Thanks so much, and I can't wait to see you again next week. Bye, Sibs. The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carl. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up, and pop, out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Sunday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night, he had a stomach ache. Oh. <laughs> the next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf, and after that, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore either. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house called the cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then, he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and he was a beautiful butterfly. The end. <laughs>